So, hi guys. I thought uh, maybe I could do just a short kind of a check-in where I uh, show you what I've been doing. Um, because I'm kind of pooped, you know. <laughs> it's been uh, a lot of work and on several levels and um, I'm rather pleased with the result, as usual, because I tend to just keep at it until I am actually pleased with the result. Hmm? I don't just uh, let it be. First thing is that actually right in the middle of the whole progressions development last week when I was uh, investigating what progress charts uh, look like for me and my husband and all that, I really um, sort of landed on, uh, for some reason, I, th I don't even remember why, it was some video that I was watching on YouTube that had, oh yeah, I remember now, it was about uh, somebody who does bookbinding, who makes these really gorgeous, great big, huge leather covered, uh, leather bound books by hand. And I felt like, okay, so now I want a book like that to contain um, the Kabbalistic, one of the fundamental texts to the Kabbalah which is the uh, Zohar text from the 13th century. And I think I already showed you this bit, which is like a, an attempt at calligraphy, which isn't really, you know, I, this isn't really the level that I want things to be at, but never mind. It's also because of the ink and the paper. The, uh, ah, this is fairly, fair, it's, you know, nah, yeah, it can be better, it can be worse. Um, it turns out that the Zohar, like a lot of those types of texts from the Jewish uh, cultural background, was edited, which means the texts were added on, commentaries were added on to a base text all the time, or at regular intervals at least. And the edition that I had copied this bit out from is actually a uh, a really nice online edition that you can just download like that for free um, that has quite a lot of the fundamental Kabbalah Tree of Life information and how that actually works and what that actually looks like. And it's quite a bit more complicated in the original even, than um, just the, you know, basic tree of life that we all know and love. Um, I have a kind of a connection that I don't really understand what, except maybe through this, um, you know, this dark self spread that I uploaded earlier this week, um, because there's a, there's a thing going on with me and jo Jewish culture anyway, which I suppose it would have been really different if that hadn't been there. So yeah, you know, duh. Um, this is one way of kind of purposefully reconnecting me reading this stuff, uh, choosing also an aspect of that culture that I can sort of feel uh, connected to in a way that's non-threatening and fairly, you know, comforting and supportive to me which is what I want. I want this to be a positive part of me, if you like, or of my life anyway. So that's why that's, I have this kind of a connection. I have Jewish ancestry on my dad's side and they're gone and lost. And a lot of the loss and of the misery in my family, uh, in the relationships in my family, in the, my, my parents and grandparents and all the rest of them um, had to do with the Second World War and the camps and all that. And there are, this is like, to me, it's one element of a way of thinking that I can approach, that I can actually kind of, you know, I can take this in my hand and read it. Whereas, I will show to you in a bit what it is. Whereas the, uh, the actual people, the way they were in my family, like before the Second World War, I have no way of knowing, really. Um... The circus ancestry that I am dis a descendant from, I have no way of knowing really how they lived other than what you can just, you know, generally imagine. Uh, in the 19th century and before that, 
Um, so this is just like, it's like one of my shortcuts really, except it's a very long shortcut <laughs> because I spent uh, all day Friday, um, back basically all day, um, extracting, so copy pasting really into a di different document uh, from this Zohar online edition that I had downloaded, right? The what looks like the original um, aphorisms, I don't know, paragraphs. So the the basic the basis of the text, where each time you have this paragraph of like between six and fifteen lines or something, and then the next page and a half or two pages and a half is about that, and it is somebody's interpretation of what's going on in the paragraph at the top right and sometimes there's two or three or four paragraphs uh, that sort of belong in the same theme in the same subject field for uh, for the Zohar so what I did is I copy pasted only the basic paragraphs into a separate document and this is what that ends up looking like it's in English so it is you know not so bad and there's 34 of these types of pages at the end of that session right so then i wanted to protect that to have something around like cardboard and i made this on top of that and i spent quite a bit of sunday and monday yesterday first uh, designing first uh, finding i hope you don't read hebrew <laughs> otherwise you'll just laugh at me which is fine uh, but at the top here, it says the Zohar in uh, in Hebrew letters. And this is our own uh, Zohar. I made, finally, I decided on Zohar fragments. Because it's just the fragments, right? It's, it doesn't contain, it's not a, I don't mean to judge the commentaries or necessarily even distance myself from them. It is just like, Whenever I start on a completely new subject matter, I want to get the basics first. I want to know what this thing is about, what it was that they were so busy with. And then later, once I have kind of familiarized myself with this material, I will, uh, you know, potentially read what it says. And I will all understand it all the much better because I have this foundation led in my brain. So I cannot, I don't like... Uh, starting off on, on something, you know, and you get this idea uh, presented to you and then immediately there is several people coming with all their ideas about this. I don't need somebody to explain stuff to me necessarily. N not right away. I can, I want to think about the thing first and then I can listen or see what they have to what what their what their you know visions and things add to the one once I've understood the basic material that's going to happen you know I can see what it's where it's going um so it's kind of scary also because I uh realize that this is also a very patriarchal and very uh, priest oriented type uh, of society where this all came from and the Zohar isn't really I suppose you could say, I don't know to the extent that I know anything about this stuff so far, is that you could say that the Zohar isn't really canon, uh, like classical Judaism. It isn't. It's like to the side of it. And it is, of course, from the witchy type of uh, angle that I come at this and that I'm interested in this. I'm inter very interested in the whole Tree of Life um, thing going on. Uh, the, the the whole patterns and the way they the way they talk about that and there's a couple of interesting almost yoga like points to what I've seen so far where it's about um, how you approach the divine and whether you are willing to surrender to that you know that kind of stuff is why I'm also into this. It's it has to do with our position in the cosmos, in in our in the world, with not only with respect to each other, but certainly with respect to other levels of consciousness and 
why are we here and all that type of stuff. So I find that particularly um, interesting. If it hadn't been about that, I wouldn't have probably taken the trouble so much to go into this. And uh, I don't know, maybe I am looking for some type of Jewish content, whatever that is, you know, some type of a philosophical type of way of thinking or feeling or that I'm uh, that I'm going for here so that's what I've been doing and you know drawing and painting this it actually looks like uh, the letters are the same type of brown as this here but there's actually several layers if you go closer you can see that of a, of a, an earth brown uh, pigment layer in the letters and that uh, creates like this contrast between the shiny uh, gold surrounding them and the letters themselves which I think is rather neat so I will spray some varnish over the top of this to protect it and then the on other news we are going to go to the house that we rented in um, early August I think I think, yes, I'm sure I'm hesitating when to say this or to say when I'm going because I don't want people over the house when I'm not here, of course. Um, yeah, so our holidays uh, are, are going, we're going on holiday. So, yeah, so that's really cool. And I've been doing research about walks in the mountains over there and that's going to be awesome. And... Um, Husband's really, really busy. Um, oh yeah, I had one other point. I told you a while ago that I have a cat, my older white cat, that he's, uh, you know, suffering from dementia. I was looking over here because he was lying in the sun uh, on the chair outside, but he was apparently hot again, so he left to lie in the bushes or somewhere else. Don't see him now. But he was, uh, you know, yammering and ma mewing also during the night and early in the morning, very loudly and very, it was, it's, uh, it's given me a lot of grief, you know, disturbing me at all hours of the night, late in the evening or early in the morning because it's lighter before five o'clock in the morning here. So I have, I've been waking up before five, so 4.30 or some ridiculous time like that. Um, to me, that's not nice. I need those last hours of sleep very badly and, um, Today I actually had a couple of extra hours hours of sleep, but I don't always get them. And uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, it, it, it's been driving me up the wall. I gave him a rose quartz pendant for a while, which definitely helped and definitely made him feel a bit better. Uh, in the sense that it was, it felt like the level of howling and yammering, which is a, it's a thing that happens in the cat's brains, right? When they're, um, when they're older, past a certain age, just their meta metabolism slows down and they uh, they get this. They can start shouting in the middle of the night. And it, it rings your nerves because it sounds like a soul in, <laughs> in, term in turmoil, in torment, you know, a tormented soul. So I was having a hard time with that. And after a while, uh, you know, I was thinking of uh, supplements, uh, you know, some type of a food supplement that he could get to. Uh, but I didn't really know what to take. There is, uh, of course, he's not really in, in actual physical pain. It's it's a brain chemistry type thing that's happening that makes him mow uh, like this, you know, mew like this. So, um, because he doesn't have any kidney problems or anything, which would otherwise be one of the other causes of, of this type of problem of behavior. Um, after a while, I figured out that it would probably be best for him to get fish oil as a as a supplement so we've been giving him that at least once a day and sometimes twice a day for the past um what was it friday i got it so saturday sunday monday actually just three and a bit days and he's much better it's definitely helping so if that is your situation with a cat you know this is just why i'm talking about this because who what the heck maybe uh you know one time somebody hears this and this is exactly what you needed to hear there's a, a like a bottle, a plastic bottle like that. It wasn't expensive. It is 99% salmon oil and it contains a bit of uh, vitamin B, I suppose as a preservative of some sort. I don't know how that works. 
and he gets an orange face from, you know, he gets it in his, uh, sometimes in his breakfast and or uh, certainly in his dinner. And I add powdered magnesium um, pills to that as well. Just a teensy, uh, like a, you know, like, like a, a pea worth of that powder because that's a muscle relaxant. And uh, it looks like the combination of the treatments is actually helping him quite a bit. He's, uh, to the extent that he's still mewing now and then, which is normal for him, but he's not screaming, you know? So there's a big difference there. And that's, you know, I'm so pleased because I was wanting to help him, but he was also completely driving me crazy. Watch with uh, the interruptions and in sleep pattern and all that. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I've got to report for today. Um, I don't think I've got that many other things. I will be reading. I will be um, doing a bit more progressions work. I will also be doing a lot of nothing for a while, you know, because in the week before we actually leave on holiday, I want to get the house cleaned out. I want to get stuff uh, stored because people will be coming to look out, look after my cats. And so on and so on so forth. But I feel like I've uh, I've done it for now. <laughs> so I'm going to take a break and go for the bath now. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'll be seeing you uh, sometime soon. Okay? Thank you for being here. And, uh, you know, be well and take care of yourself. Okay? Ciao.